What's poppin' behind there? It's your boy back with another video. First, I want to thank everybody for the massive outpouring of support I've received recently, especially on my YouTube video. It's gotten almost 40,000 views at the time I'm recording this, which really amazes me. I honestly would have been amazed if I got 1,000 or 2,000 of them. I mean, especially considering that I'm a nobody creating a fan game. So thank you, everybody. I will tell you up front, this video is going to be a lot shorter than the other one. It's also not going to include a lot of gameplay footage from the engine itself. In fact, at the moment, you have something playing in the background from the original Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which, for those of you who haven't played this game, go out and buy it right now. If you can find the original PlayStation 1 and have a way to play it, do that. If you have to buy one of the reissue versions, buy it. I mean, bottom line is, it's an amazing game, and I'm a huge supporter of Konami. I've been a fan of them since I was a kid. I can remember playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the arcade with people. I can remember going home and playing Contra and Super Contra on my Nintendo. I mean, when I was a kid, Konami, Capcom, Sega, and Nintendo, these were the big players in the industry. Yeah, you had things like Midway Games, for example, you know, and you had a couple other smaller companies in there who would put out stuff. Data East springs to mind. But those were the big names to everybody. So, with that being said, buy the original game, support them. I fully endorse Konami. Now, with that being said, this is mostly going to be a Q&A session at first. I'm going to be covering a couple of basic questions and points about the engine. I'm not going to be going into my details right now about my plans for the engine. I'll make another video for that because it's going to be much longer. But let's start off with a question I received a couple of times and that was about Alucard's double jump animation. Um, in the initial game he used bird wings. I'm not sure why they chose that design choice. It's kind of neat looking but the fact is he's a damn fair. He's half vampiric, half human. He uses bad form, wolf form, and mist. I have no idea why they used bird wings. I was actually going to use bat wings for it, but I used that for the air rush already, so I didn't really want to do it again. And honestly, I thought Grimoire of Souls double jump had this almost gliding effect similar to his back step, so I chose to use it. The other thing is I would like to give the winged version to Maria. And the reason is because she uses her four ch she has her four gods, and it's a shame that in the original game they're really barely used at all. I mean, they're really not used to their full potential. It's not like she uses them to power up at all, and it would be nice to give her different moves, relics, that would make her able, like, the, the ability to dash could come from her cat, or the ability to double jump could come from flaming wings from her bird, and stuff like that. But I'm not really going to go into Maria in much detail now, or Richter, mostly because it all depends on whether I can get the funding for their sprites, whether or not I can make full-fledged games for them as well. But they are definitely planned. Now, the next question that came up a lot was the difficulty of the game. Yes, the difficulty is going to be increased. Quite a bit. I've said this before, one of my biggest issues and my main reason for starting to even hack this game when I originally was doing it with Memhack was how easy the game was. I mean, it's just too easy. And with all the new things that are going to be in the game, I'm going to have to heavily modify it so that it's much faster paced and much more difficult. So for those of you who are worried the game is going to be a, a cakewalk, don't worry, it won't be. And there is a normal and a hard more planned. I do not plan to make an easy mode. I'll say that again. I do not plan to make an easy mode. If you have trouble with normal, you're going to have to practice and get good. Just like with the old Nintendo Castlevanias, you have to practice and get good. And that's all there is to it. Another question that came up was, are there going to be any areas outside of the castle planned? The answer is yes. In fact, before you even get to the castle, I have two areas planned, not counting the prologue. Uh, the first, which I put up a brainstorming thread for on a forum I created, I'll include the link in the video description when the forum is completed, but I have a couple of things I'm still working on on it with somebody who's helping me out. But I put up a brainstorming thread there for the first stage, which is going to be a graveyard type area. There's also another area, a forest, planned before you actually go into the castle itself. And once you beat Richter, there are several areas outside of the castle planned that you're going to be able to explore before you actually get up to Shaft's castle. But that's stuff that I'll delve on later. I just wanted to let everybody know, yes, there are areas planned for outside of the castle. Now, Patreon is something else I want to discuss. I did put up a Patreon. This Patreon, I have to say, is not just going to be for the Symphony of the Night project, only because that might be a bit questionable if I was making a Patreon for just that. I don't know if it would ruffle some feathers or cause an issue. So I'll put it this way. That Patreon is for any and all projects I have. The engine I'm programming isn't just for Castlevania. It can be used for a number of things and is planned for a number of fan games. Case in point, I've always wanted to make a Super Mario Bros. 3 remake of some kind. Um, I felt that game had a lot of potential in the Mario series, still has a lot of potential that isn't properly being used. 
there are a lot of other IPs. I'd like to make my own game using the engine, but again, this is all stuff about, I'll talk about at a later date. The bottom line is if you like my projects, you know, if you want to assist me, if you want to see this become a reality, go to my Patreon, become a member, go to PayPal, make a donation, whatever you want to do. If you don't have money, well, don't worry about it. You know, the bottom line is real life has to come first. And as an adult man who's currently unemployed and heavily in debt, I might add, and you can thank my, <laughs> my education for that, but I digress. Um, I understand real life comes first and nobody owes me anything. So if you don't have the money, don't worry about it. You know, go out, buy yourself some food, buy yourself a new pair of shoes, whatever makes you happy. If you do have the funds, hey, great. Donate whatever you can. You know, the more I get, the better off it'll be, the quicker progress goes because I can hopefully eventually get another artist in. Not to mention, the more funds I bring in, the less time I have to worry about working eventual overtime, and every hour that I'm home is another hour I could be working on the engine. The link will be in the description of the video. Alright, so let's move on to something more important. Maria Plans and Richter. Now, I covered this very briefly earlier in this video, but it suffice to say I would love to include them in the game. I have enough concept info for about six different characters. Fully fleshed out, full move sets, their own subs, their own relics, their own stages to the to go through. Well, I shouldn't say their own stages to go through. They'd be about the same stages, but with some tweaks and changes to make them unique so you can use their individual abilities, like the fact that Alucard has a bat form and wolf form. Richter would have the ability to use his whip to swing from things and possibly jump off of walls, things like that. Maria might be able to use her familiars like a cat to go through, her cat familiar to go through smaller areas, or maybe her turtle to crawl through a vent where there's flames bursting all over the place to protect itself, or even possibly her bird familiar to fly around shooting fireballs at enemies as it tries to traverse a treacherous terrain full of spikes, saw blades, or what have you. I would love to do all these things, but the bottom line is it all comes down to whether I can get the funding I need for spriting or not. If I can get that, I'd be happy to program it. If I can't, well, that's that because I've already put over $6,000 of my own money into this project here, and it's just a fan project. I'm not making any money off this, and I don't plan to. I do it because I enjoy doing this. If I was going to make something, I would call it with my own creation. My own, excuse me, my own personal creation. I do not intend to profit off an intellectual property that doesn't belong to me. That's the bottom line. If I can get the funding for those characters to sprite them, I will. So, what do I actually need to complete this project? Well, the big things right now are sprites, and I'm not expecting people to sprite for free because I know how involved that is. It's a lot of work, very time consuming, and can be very strenuous as well, especially when you're spriting with somebody else's requesting of you, and I'm extremely picky with what I'll accept. The reason is the original game has very high quality standards, so whatever I create has to be able to fit in with that. Now, with that being said, Funding for spriting will work, and again, this is why I touched on a Patreon and PayPal earlier, which I'm not going to go into again. But the other thing I could use is somebody who can heavily edit and create sound effects, which is a definite need for the game. And I also could use ideas for the first stage, the new graveyard area, which I have actually created a forum and put up a brainstorming thread designed for that. So I'll leave a link in the description of the video where the forum is once I've finished setting it up. But other than that, I'm not really going to touch on it anymore. That's all I really need. Everything else I pretty much handle myself. I have a couple people that work with me that have access to the source code. And those three or four people, I'm going to keep their names private, but they've been extremely helpful as well. I do all the coding, but they keep a copy of it in case something happens. And the reason behind that logic brings me to my next point. The dreaded C and D that everybody keeps mentioning. First up, any further posts about a CND will be deleted immediately. I'm going to cover this here, so at that point it's just going to be trolling, and I don't need the negativity. Second up, Konami has already given their blessing to a number of different fan games out there. If they have an issue with this one, they'll let me know, and that'll be between me and them. It'll be nobody else's business. Uh, bottom line, and I'm going to discuss this a little more, and then I'm going to get off it while I wreck Slogger and Gaiben here, as you can see. Um, this code's been given out to four of the people, so even if they sent me a CND, well, that's fine. I'd have to comply with it, but I can't speak for the other people out there. And those people, for all I know, have given that code out to two or three other people. So, I, it would just mean I'd be out of the project. It wouldn't mean the project would die, because then those people are going to do whatever the heck they want. Similar to what happened with other fan games like Super Mario Bros. X, or even AM2R, that to this day is still being updated, or even a game like... Terror Drone, where they were given a CND for having Freddy Krueger and just left them out because Mortal Kombat 9 was coming out. A year and a half later, they put him back in. Bottom line is, it'll get handled. It's nobody else's business. Stop bringing it up. We don't need the negativity. Think positive, people. 
I, for one, have faith in Konami because so far they've been pretty good with Castlevania fan games. But regardless, we'll see what happens. So with all that being out of the way, let's start talking about the new content I've been working on for the last two weeks or so since I put up my previous update vid. As you can see, we still have some video from the classic Symphony of the Night playing. In particular, this has Wolf Form in it. Now, the reason I wanted to show this off is, with all due respect to Konami's programmers and artists, I'm just not very happy with this Wolf Form and never have been. I don't like the controls. Its colors, I don't know what they were thinking with this bright bluish purple palette. Its motion is very robotic. Its limbs move up and down. It just doesn't look like a wolf at all. I mean, for the time, it's an excellent piece of work, but the fact of the matter is, I've always heavily wanted to improve on this. I still wanted to angle as it went up and down slopes, but I didn't want it to look so disjointed. So, what I did was I simply had to sprite a bunch of new animations and take into account all the different heights, angles, etc. that are going to be within the game to make it look good. Now, I'll go ahead and compare that to this. Here, I'm going to be showing off the idle, the walk, the turning, the crouching, the stand up, and the landing animations. The only animations that are not complete for slopes, and we're actually working on those still, is going to be dashing, the ground sword, pain animations, and when he's using his sub weapon. Again, the normal versions are done, but for the slopes, we had to make unique ones. And those involve going into individual animations, rotating the pieces, and assembling them, positioning them rather, along with making new legs to fit in. And I want to credit my artist for a lot of the work he's put into this. I've also done work on this as well, but he has been extremely invaluable. Mario Santos also did a good number of the initial sprites, so again, I want to give a shout out to him as well. Credit where credit is due. One thing I will say is that we are going to need a couple of new tails here, but that's not really a big deal. It's a minor thing I'm leaving for last because that's probably going to take a day to do. So, this is what we've accomplished in the last maybe week and a half to two weeks since December 25th when I put up the update. And believe me when I say, this stuff is pretty involved. I'm actually going to pull up Unity now and show you the workflow, just so you can see how involved this is. But in short, for going up slope, it involves four different animation points, and for going down slope, it involves five. And this was necessary because we have to take into account not only when he's going up or down, but also what if he's coming up onto a slope? What if he's going down onto a slope? What if he's coming off a down slope? What if he's coming off an up slope? And so on and so forth. We also have to make sure we adjust because in-game slopes can be 45 degrees or half-sized, which would be about 22.5 degrees. So those both have to be accounted for. And here's the workspace I was talking about within Unity. Right now, you're looking at the Wolf Forms animator component on its topmost layer. And the majority of these have several animations within them. However, the one we want to look at is the layer called Angling. And the reason is because Angling is what has all the animations related to going up and down slopes. As you can see, it's broken up by animation. And then each sub-animation has ten more animations in it. With one of them being the base one, four of them being the up ones I talked about, and five of them being the ones going down slopes that we discussed. And the way this works is, let's say for Idle, it will probably take a day and a half to go ahead and complete idle and do all these animations. For some of them, it'll take a day, but a day and a half is more realistic. And the reason is we want time to polish it, get it looking just right, make sure there's no issues, test it out, etc. So, as I said, even the simplest looking things can be extremely complicated, which is quite surprising. That's why I said this is an excellent learning experience for me. And with that, I feel like I've run my mouth long enough. It's El Dia de los Reyes today. For all my non-Spanish speaking people, that means Three Kings Day, it's basically the Spanish Christmas, so I'm about to go kick back with the fam a bit. Subscribe to my Patreon, or donate via PayPal, links will be down below. I'm also going to put a link to the forum here so you guys can reach it. I hope to put up another update within two weeks or so, so I'll talk to you all then.